Okay guys, continuing on, this is part two of lecture one. Um, as I said before, uh, Ernest Rutherford and others did some experiments in relation to uh, atomic structure, etc. And they came up with this particular model for the atom. One thing that I want to point out to you that's uh, pretty important is that when you look at the at textbook diagrams of atoms, you'll see there's various uh, ways in which they're portrayed. The reason that is we simply don't have the technology to show every different way that we can look at them, centralize them, they're quite things. But this is a pretty simple one here. number of very simple particles and uh, electrons. Now what are the most important points for you to pick up about an atom? Well those electrons are uh, uh, well ab about the particles themselves uh, which by the way are called subatomic particles collectively. The uh, one of the particles, the electrons, they're negatively charged. They have a one minus charge. Important you need to know that. And the protons they have a one plus charge. Uh, neutrons don't have a charge at all. Neutrons and protons are actually quite massive in comparison to electrons. About 1800 times the mass. In other words, if an electron was one gram, which it certainly isn't, but if it was one gram, then a neutron would be 1800 grams or 1 1.8 kilos. Quite a difference. This model here is perfectly consistent with what Rutherford saw. Um, by the way. So Rutherford fired alpha particles and these alpha particles came in and most of them went straight through. Whoops, I shouldn't have drawn it so close to the nucleus. Most of them went straight through here and from that he concluded the atoms mostly empty space. But every now and then an alpha particle, which by the way is positively charged, it would come in and it would actually hit the nucleus and then rebound or be substantially deflected. Um, being positive and positive charges repel, it hit this massive positively charged nucleus and that's why it rebounded. Okay, let's uh, just look at the little summary there. You can read that at your own leisure. Alright, there's a little summary table showing you the characteristics of these subatomic particles. By the way, the Two particles that sit in the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons, are also collectively referred to as nucleons. Now I've already really talked all this. You don't have to remember what the actual mass is of these particles. I mean, no one I think remembers that the mass of an electron is 9 by 10 to the minus 28 of a gram, and at this point you don't even know what 10 to the minus 28 is. Um, but what's important is that you remember what the relative masses are. So if you gave an electron a mass, an arbitrary mass of 1, then a proton is about 1800 times the mass of an electron. You don't have to remember the number exactly. And a neutron is about 1800 times the mass of an electron. In other words, Protons and neutrons approximately the same mass. They're the most important points to remember. Okay, now we uh, look at a, another idea when we're considering atoms, and that's the idea of atomic number. So what is the number? It's the number of protons in an atom's nucleus. And you'll see how important this is as we go through the lectures. So you have to remember this fact, the atomic number, and it's given sometimes the symbol Z, is the number of protons in the nucleus. So if I said to you Z equals 3, what that means is the atom that we're considering has 3 uh, protons. So that's another example. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12. It has uh, 12 protons. Now the other thing uh, that you must pick up here 
is when we're considering atoms, and let's start with um, that, that atom actually neutrally charged, that is, they have no charge at all in total. In other words, the charges balance out the negative ones. So, if an atom has an atomic number of 12 and it has 12 protons, there we go there, 12 protons, also means it has 12 plus charges. So, for those 12 plus charges to be balanced out, it must have 12 electrons, because if you recall, those electrons are negatively charged. So it has 12 plus charge, and it must have 12 negative charges. And of course, the negatives and the positives are out, so overall the thing is electrically neutral. It's a very important point to remember. The other uh, idea that you've got to come to grips with is that of mass number. So the mass number of an atom is the sum of the numbers of protons and neutrons in its nucleus. So here's the number of protons, here's the number of neutrons. You add the two together, that equals the mass number. You'll see the importance of this again, progress through the letter. All right, let me illustrate that by example to start with. If an atom has an atomic number of 11, and it has a mass number of 23, you can then work out how many neutrons it's got. How do you do that? Well, if it has an atomic number of 11, it must have electrons. It's got to have 11 electrons, but the number of neutrons is going to be 23. That's the mass number minus the number of protons. And once you're answering the question, how many neutrons do I need in addition to to end up with a mass number of 23, and of course the answer is 12. Add them up, 11 and 12 equals 23. It must have 11 protons and 12 neutrons. Um, how do you actually represent an atom? Uh, you can do that by writing down its symbol. Uh, there's a number of different types of atoms, and sometimes they actually have a charge on them, but we'll get to that later. Um, but the most important point here is to wonder that an atom can be represented by an atomic symbol. It's actually a shorthand notation. How does that symbol, or what does that symbol look like? Well, the full uh, notation looks like this. X is actually a letter, or two letters, represents the type of atom. Uh, Z is the atomic number, the number of protons, and A is the mass number, the number of protons plus. And there's a summary there for you. Okay, atomic symbols, um, you, uh, how do you use these symbols? Well, let me just give you an example, you'll pick it up pretty quickly, it's a cool concept. Um, if we consider the uh, atom, um, carbon, then um, that carbon atom is given the symbol C. Uh, you've got to be careful here though, uh, I've got to point out to you, because some uh, atoms have, uh, uh, they start with the same letter, for example, cobalt obviously starts with a C, but clearly you can't give cobalt a capital C because carbon is a capital C. So in this instance, what you do is you use a lowercase o here for the first two letters of the name of that particular atom. So cobalt is CO. I can't stress enough, it's extremely important to make sure that you're clear on whether you're writing upper or lowercase symbols because sometimes it can get very mixed up. For example, if you don't, that is, uh, for example, oxygen has the symbol O. So obviously, if you meant to write C and O, meaning you've got carbon and oxygen, and you write C lowercase, people will look at that and referring to cobalt. So just a... a uh, a heads up there. All right. Um, oh yeah. yeah, I'll just go back here. One, one whoops, important point too, uh, in case you're wondering, is that when you start looking at the symbols for particular elements, you also see that sometimes they're not logically uh, represented in the way in which they're written. So for example, uh, copper. 
So copper you might would be written CO as the symbol, but uh, of course that's already been taken by cobalt, so we can't use that. So what people normally do is use the uh, Latin name. So the Latin name for copper is cuprum, so therefore the uh, symbol for copper is, and of course, because there's a second letter there, it's actually lowercase. Okay, isotopes. What are isotopes? Um, well, actually, before I even say anything to you there, let me tell you something most important, and that is that the uh, number of protons in the nucleus of an atom determines what the uh, type of atom is. So, uh, for example, uh, carbon has six protons, and any atom that has six protons is carbon. Helium has two protons. Any atom that has two protons is helium. They can have different numbers of neutrons, uh, but it's the number of protons that determines what the particular atom is. So when these have different numbers of neutrons, they're referred to collectively as isotopes. And there's just a little summary of just what I said there. Let me illustrate it by example. Here we have hydrogen. We look at isotopes of hydrogen. The number of uh, protons in hydrogen is one. It's always one. So if something has one proton, hydrogen. But hydrogen can have different numbers of neutrons. So, for example, hydrogen can have no neutrons, in which case it's given this full atomic symbol here. Remember this one here refers to the uh, uh, atomic number of protons. This ref number up here refers to the mass number, which is the number of protons plus it's, it's got one proton, it's got no neutrons, one plus zero equals one. End of story. Deuterium, it's got, well, just ignore the deuterium for a moment. If we look at this type of hydrogen, it's got one proton, of course, it two, but this one's actually got one neutron. So the number of nucleons, that is the mass number, is 1 plus 1 equals 2. So it's written with a superscript 2 up here. It's actually got two neutrons, 1 plus 2 equals 3. So it's written with a mass number of 3 up here. It just so happens for isotopes of hydrogen that we give them special names well, and they're hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. Okay, that's part two of this lecture. Um, part three coming up.